this lady literally killed her husband at him and went to prison and she still has money more than both of us watching this video and the crazy part is the guy who gave her all of that money that she has now is not her husband it's not the husband she killed it's a different guy who met her in prison like what are we doing this is the story of Omaima Nelson. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm G and I do true crime videos from Mondays to Fridays. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you consider subscribing and turn on post notifications so that whenever a new video is uploaded, you are notified. And today we are going to be looking at Omaima Nelson. Full disclaimer, the stuff I say in my videos is a compilation of what I've read on the internet and I mean no disrespect to whosoever is mentioned. I'd like to say a huge welcome to all our new subscribers thank you very much and i hope that i'm able to deliver what you like for the month of february i'm thinking of doing a series of serial killers and there's a lot of them that i can see from any country whatever country you think of but not popular ones i want cases that have not really gotten light so please let me know S suggest those type of cases in the comments and if you haven't checked out our 10 days of terror it was like 10 really horrible crimes that were committed so go check that out i'm gonna stop talking now and tell you the story so omaima or omaima but i feel like i don't know which one is which but omaima sounds nicer to me so i'm gonna use omaima she was born in 1968 it doesn't give a specific date like the month and the day but it just says the year so she was born in egypt and she had a really crazy childhood just to say the least Omaima's mom and dad ended up having a divorce and she decided to go with her mom or I don't know if she decided but she went with her mom and and she and her mom moved to a city called City of the Dead which is like a slum there's just like so many graveyards there which is why they call it the name and it was just a crazy childhood also Omaima suffered a lot of molestation and just at the age of seven she underwent female genital mutilation which is just like left up in all levels just on its own and after that she still underwent sexual abuse so like at that time it was like a serious thing going on at that time in egypt like this is no shade to egypt or anything but it was also something like class related because if you're like from the poorer class like a lot of girls have to go through that like no one is really watching out for them and making sure that nothing like this happens to them and those like in the middle class some of them go through it some of them don't and those in like the upper class whose parents have a lot of money it's just like 30 something percent of them that go through it the rest of the percentage like don't go through that so like the less money you had the more sus susceptible you were to undergo such a procedure so that really messed up with her so imagine being molested after undergoing such a procedure that already makes the process of having sex really painful and really annoying and you have to get molested after that. So Omaima grew up like that and when she was 18 years old, she met this American guy and they were together. So her mom convinced her to marry this guy and go with him because it seemed like she, she was not this, it seemed like she was not this pure girl that everyone is going to want. So it was just best for her. This guy is American, he can take her to the US and he probably has some money and so her mother was just like this is i think this is something that's going to be best for you so she should do it and that's exactly what omaima did so omaima and this guy get married and moved to the u.s and moved to texas the marriage quickly fell apart so they broke up and omaima was just living a life of she was doing a little bit of modeling like not big scale modeling yet she was still beginning her modeling career after her marriage fell apart omaima moved to california and Given that her modeling career was just at the beginning stages, she kind of leaned on being with guys that were willing and able to take care of her. So that was her time. And one day in 1991, when Omaima was in a bar, she was 23 years old at this time, she met this guy who looked exactly like a type. He seemed rich and he looked like he was willing to spend and she looked pretty. So I was always wondering at her. And so she met this guy and he was 56 years old. And this guy is Bill Nelson. Well... Bill had just been released from prison where he had been convicted for transporting marijuana because Bill was an ex-pilot but in that plane of his he transported marijuana from Mexico to Texas where he owned a ranch with his brother. So my man Bill met in California and Bill had five kids some of the kids were actually older than her and so obviously this is some this is going to piece everyone up like who is this strange girl come to take away our dad from us and it's just really annoying but she did not care and bill she and bill built their relationship together really really fast and within days of knowing each other and a crazy romance they decided to get married after time did not they went to the ranch we talked about where bill where bill owned with his brother in texas and had their honeymoon and after the honeymoon they moved back to california where they built their family life 
So after Omaima and Bill got married, Omaima claims that he became really abusive to her and sometimes even pimped her out to older guys. Apparently he would tie her up, assault her and do whatever he wanted to do with her even when she did not feel like doing that. And this is all according to Omaima because Bill is not here to confirm or deny. All about this molestation and stuff we are talking about is within days, like within weeks of knowing each other because they have known each other, married within days and this is within weeks of their married life. So all of this happens in like the span of three weeks. And during one of the times when Bill and Omaima, they were riding a horse, Omaima fell off the horse and hit her head really bad with that fall. And when she woke up from it, everyone was like disturbed and trying to like get her, rush her to the hospital. And she was like, wait, let me think. Um, um, I'm fine. I'm good. Just give me a bottle of scotch and I'll be fine. Which I'm like trying to do everything to understand ways in which mine had already been effed up to be able to commit the crime that she's going to commit in the latter days so thanksgiving 1991 comes this is amaima and bill they had a really good thanksgiving dinner with a friend who had come to visit so after their guests had left bill was like yeah this is thanksgiving and he was in the mood and he was like well let's be thankful for each other and my mom was like um i'm not in the mood but bill was like he was sort of insisting so my mom claims that she was insisting that she was not in the mood and bill wanted her to do stuff that she did not want to do and so he decided to force her he tied her up and tried to have his way with her and while he was at it she was able to grab a lamp and hit him in the head talking about tying up she was like the type of stuff that they were probably into or it was because he wanted to force himself on her but yeah so she grabbed the lamp and hit him at the back of his head and she grabbed the scissors and stabbed him 25 times and her thanksgiving was just beginning so after stabbing him she was like um what do we do next so she grabbed a cloth iron and beat him to death with it and she used the cloth iron to beat him until the iron got broken wait you heard that right. The iron got broken. An iron looks like this. And she used that to beat another human until it got broken. So she was taking out all the frustration of all the years of her entire life and taking it out on this man. So after he dies, she castrates him, chops his head off, and skins his torso. So this is where I begin to talk about the trauma that she had lived through that was just being because the first thing she was thinking of was to castrate him, which was something that had been done to her. And she was just taking it out on Bill, probably because of something that he had done, or maybe he was just the last person there. But she must have been triggered to unleash all of what had been done to her onto him. And the next thing she did was to chop his body into multiple pieces. After doing all of this to his body, she did some cleaning up. She was probably dirty and she did not want to cook looking so dirty. So she cleaned up, put on a red hat, put on a red shoe, red lipstick, and she began to cook his body. So she boiled his head and cut off his fingers and put them in the fryer to permanently remove any fingerprints. I'm not sure if he's, if this was like out of experience because when you mistakenly murder someone, you don't really think of, oh my gosh, how can I make sure that no one ever finds him, no one ever finds his body and is able to get his fingerprints to like, I don't know, get DNA or something. But she was so smart. She was so smart to think of that, which is like crazy. She was done cooking his head. She cooked, she claimed that she cooked his ribs in barbecue sauce and she ate them. So it was part of her Thanksgiving dinner meal. But she later on told the secretaries that she did not eat them. So she later on retracted this statement. So the rest of those body parts that Omaima had like, chopped into pieces, yeah, she gathered those, mixed them with some of the Thanksgiving leftovers, and then began to dispose them in the garbage disposal. And her neighbors testified to having heard the garbage disposal run for hours and hours. So this obviously took a lot of work for her to be able to chop the body and to be able to put them down the disposal. All of this big looking guy for this tiny looking lady and 23 years old, it was just a lot of work and she had a lot of cuts on her, like consistent marks, not like defense wounds, but like wounds of like someone who has been doing some really hard chopping. And when she was, she was able to dispose a good chunk of his remains, so the parts of the body that she could not dispose of, she wrapped in a newspaper and wrapped like a plastic over it and put those in a duffel bag. This is Bill's bag and put them in the back, in the trunk of Bill's car drove this car to a first boyfriend who is not named and was like hey can you help me like 
kind of like just dispose of a body and he was like mm, no i don't want to be part of this and he just disappeared because it shows that the second boyfriend that she went to was like a second person so she had been to the first person talked about this and the person did not think to call the police or anything she went to a second ex-boyfriend to <laughs> tell him okay i'm waiting to give you seventy five thousand dollars but i need you to like just dispose of my husband's body like the remains of it because like i spent the past few days killing him and cutting him into pieces and the guy was like um $75,000 I think it's okay I can do it for you so just wait for me here so he just tried to like stall her and went back and called for the police like um there's a crazy lady here and it's my well she was my friend and she has a body that she wants to dispose you should come immediately so let's come over and meet Omaima still by the car waiting for her friend to come over and the police were like hi um how are you and she was like she's good so they're asking about husband she was like um she hasn't even seen him for like the past few days because this was like two days after thanksgiving when she had been busy doing all of this stuff the police like where was your husband and she kind of told them that he had traveled and she was not she did not know what he was up to like but she, she, her husband had just traveled and they were like okay can we look in the trunk of your car she was like okay fine and they looked inside but the crazy part is that she had disfigured his body even the head that she had bought he was unrecognizable so the police they had no idea if that was like just leftovers from thanksgiving or actually a body or an animal and they were just trying to ask her and she did not want to say anything she was like um this is my husband's car i have no idea what he could have done or who could be in the back of the car after all the chopping it did not really look like a body so they could not just go out right and say okay this is a body and whose body is it at this point they just detained her because they were not sure what was that in the trash they detained her and did not really arrest her for murder so the police had Omaima with them. Bill did not show up to work and Omaima would not tell them where Bill is. So they had to go do a wellness check and they had a warrant to go into the house. And when the police went there, it was just a horror. And honestly, I feel bad for the police officers who had to go and see that kind of live through that hell because when they opened the house it was just covered in blood and the fingers that were in the fryer were still there. The head that she had chopped and bald unrecognizably was still there. And their skin tussle it was still there everything was still in its pipe and bill's body was just in like different parts of the house so after putting all the different parts of bill together ish the police were still missing almost a hundred pounds of bill and that is a lot of one person and so the police were like hi my mom um where is the rest of bill and she was like mm, he's all there but that's when the neighbor came in to talk about the garbage disposal thing so aside from the garbage disposal being responsible for a good chunk of Bill's body, there's the part that she had cooked. Why did she cook him if she did not plan to eat him? Because when she went to court, she told the judge like she's not a monster, she wouldn't eat him. But she had told the psychiatrist that she ate him and he tasted sweet. So when the judge asked her on the oath, she just refused to answer. So the question goes to why did she cook him? Because there's a lot of things that she had done to him. She had chopped him, she had skinned him, she had put him in the garbage disposal and she did not need to cook him to be able to dispose of him. So why did she cook him if she actually never ate him? On the 1st of December, 1990, so exactly one year after she was first arrested, Omama's trial began and her defense was based on the fact that she was claiming self-defense Aside from insanity, a bit of that, she was also claiming self-defense and battered woman syndrome. So her defense was basically saying that because of all the stuff that had happened to her in the past that was already messed up and her mind was already messed up with that, Bill repeatedly assaulting her and that day she just snapped and decided to protect herself from him and she had just had enough. And the rest of the things that she did to his body after was because of the trauma from everything that she had already been through which is which brings the battered woman syndrome she also claimed that there were gods from ancient egypt that appeared to her and told her that she really had to kill bill she was not really thinking about killing bill she just wanted to free herself from it but the gods told her that she needed to kill him so that was also some hallucination things that it was like she really needed psychiatric help and also when the rape kit came back that they had conducted on her it came back negative like she did not have like tears and bruises but it might have been inaccurate because it seemed like bill wanted to do 
other stuff with her which she did not want to do so that might have happened and the rape kit does not cover that especially in the 1990s so the persecution had a strong case also because she they just stated that her motive of killing bill was just to get his money period and she had a history of being with older guys who seemed to have money and it was just like her thing and they brought up this witness who was an ex-boyfriend of hers which is an older guy too who said that one time when she was with him she had seductively tied him up like they were about to have sex but she when he was tied up she took a gun and pointed at him to get his money he also stated that he was able to free himself from it took the gun from her and then gave her back the gun so after that the judge was just like um strike that if, if he felt like he was so much in danger, he would not have freed her and then given her back the gun, but she had escaped with his money. The persecution was trying to show that that's a pattern for her and those were the type of guys she always went for. So the jury did not take too much time to decide that Omaima was guilty, but not of first degree murder, of second degree murder. And so she was going to spend 27 years to life in imprisonment. And she was off for parole in 2016, but did not get it. It seemed like her behavior was not really good. So she's up for parole again in 2026, which is coming really fast. It's like super crazy how Bill's life went to single, married, and dead in in a month because they literally took days to know each other and decided whether they wanted to marry each other which was why the persecution had a really strong case saying that they were already married which comes to like the money issues wanting to be the filter rich widow but um, but the question that i'm posing again is bill already had five kids was it 17 grandkids and was from jail for doing drugs so any money that he probably had would have been seized or probably going to his kids or something so the jury was meant to believe that after everything that Omaima had been through and for the one month that she had been in a marriage with him which was also full of molestation they were supposed to believe that Omaima just killed him for his money what about all the other guys that she had already met but well I guess they believed that and the psychiatrist that had spoken to her felt really bad because she felt like Omaima needed more of her help, like she needed mental care more than a prison. While Omaima was in prison, she met her third love of her life, I guess. This guy was a 70 year old. He was because he do this dead right now. He was a 70 year old senior, like senior, senior, senior. Yep, he was 70 years old and he was on a wheelchair and Omaima met, I don't know how they met, what, did, did they have like prison tender or something? But yeah, they met each other. She was just his type and he was her type obviously because he had money and so when they got married while she was in jail and they had a three day conjugal visit. So I'm just putting it in, like I can only imagine what you're imagining right now and this guy ended up dying i guess he died a happy man after a three-day conjugal visit yeah he died a happy man and he was so happy with himself that he decided to leave all of his money for his now true love omaima so even though she's in prison she has more money than probably both of us and she's just waiting for her parole to be able to leave and live that bougie lifestyle and she never has to be with another man because he's going to take care of her Obviously mother is horrible and she shouldn't have done like no There's no reason for you to take another person's own life no matter what they have done to you But I also feel like she had been through so much and she needed more of medical help than to be in prison And while she's in prison now, she's not going through like any therapy or something to kind of Make her mind okay because that's where the problem begins that outfit that she had, that she wore that day, she had probably been planning that for a while. She did not just snap, except that he had always been molesting her and she had been planning it. And that day was just the perfect day to be thankful for getting rid of him. But I feel like even though she has this money outside, which the government has said she's not going to touch until she leaves prison, even though she has this money outside, she might never see it because... She has already missed two opportunities of parole and there's no changes being seen in her. She's not going through therapy or something. So who knows whether she's ever going to leave jail or maybe she's going to leave jail 
to a mental hospital or something who knows but oh my mind is still richer than both of us what do you guys think do you think she's a victim so many people are still conflicted about that but let me know what you guys think in the comments and what serial killers do you want us to talk about for the next month that was it for me today guys see you guys in the next video remember to be the best version of yourself and see you tomorrow with another video just like this goodbye